Max and welcome back to From the Depths. So I know that last time I said that I was going to start a campaign, and uh, I really did mean to. I even started a campaign just to see how it was. And I realized pretty quickly that they've changed how much materials you get at the beginning. And all of a sudden you go from having almost no materials at the beginning and having to use really tiny cramp ships. And all of a sudden, now we can afford to have 300, 400, 500,000 material ships right at the beginning. So, I saw that and I was like, right, we need to build a heavy cruiser. And this is iteration or design number three of that quote unquote heavy cruiser. Um, it developed quite quickly from a heavy cruiser to a battle cruiser to what we have in front of us now, which is a battleship. This is the Mars class battleship, that's what I'm calling it, and it is probably the best looking ship I've ever made, which is a very low bar because all my ships look crap. Uh, but I'm very happy with this one, apart from the tower, engine, and uh, whatever that is called. But aside from that, I think it looks great. Uh, we really tried to really lengthen the ship this time, as opposed to widen. So usually my ships are quite wide and not very long, so this time we went for a much longer one. We tried to uh, add this little bulge at the bottom, like most ships actually do in real life, and I think it looks a lot better. And uh, I reined myself in a little bit on the armor. The price is 460000 so it's definitely not a heavy cruiser, this is definitely battleship territory. Anything above 500000 is a dreadnought, so... We're quite close there. Um, I was really hoping that our battleship would have three of these turrets on the front, but clearly that's reserved for dreadnoughts only. So let's just go through the ship. First thing and the thing that I'm most proud of is we finally got the PIDs working, and this ship floats single-handedly by its propellers. It also stops it from pitching, it stops it from yawing, it stops it from rolling. Uh, not yawing, you can still yaw, obviously. Um, but it makes it really stable, and uh, should we lose engine power for whatever reason, it can float on its own just fine. But this is just really useful. Um, the main weapons of this ship are our cram cannon turrets, obviously. Uh, we've got four six barrel guns, uh, they're all 2000 millimeters. They are all have exactly the same pallet number, which is a mistake I made in my previous designs. They had different pallet numbers. Uh, they've got a uh, penetration depth fuse of 2 meters. As you can see, they can punch through a significant chunk of armor. And uh, this center one has uh, 84 EMP. Oh, we're moving for some reason. Let's uh, stop that. So uh, it can do quite a significant amount of EMP damage. I also put some of the barrels inside the turret, so it looks a little better. It doesn't look so... Uh, noodly anymore. So for our secondary armament, our secondary armament to engage other capital ships, I might add, uh, are these advanced cannon rail guns. Now because these are my rail guns, obviously the sh shell they fire is heat, because that makes perfect sense, uh, but I'm very happy with the shell. It's just an HE shell. That is it. Um, fired through rail guns, which accelerate the shell up to 700 meters per second, and it's got enough elevation that it should be able to target uh, planes as well, just in case. Now aside from these uh, railgun turrets, we have uh, two turreted uh, torpedoes, mostly just to use up the space on top here, and then we've got eight of these uh, flak guns here, firing actual flak shells I might add instead of my usual heat shells, uh, which pained me a lot, but these will do significantly better against uh, aircraft, and they will provide us a significant amount of protection. On top of here we've got these uh, close defense things to shoot at cram cannon shells, but our main cram cannon defense are these lasers at the front here, in the bow. A little bit vulnerable in the bow, uh, but they each drive one of these, and two of them drive these two uh, respectively. So it means that we can block an entire crossbones volley standing still and doing nothing, which is pretty cool. Now it does have shields, as you can see. Not a great place for my shields, but I tacked them on at the end. 
I just haven't turned them on yet. Uh, even without a shield, it can still take on a crossbones, two crossbones, three crossbones, and a pilferer. I'm just going to let you watch one of these volleys, just so we can prove that our lasers do actually in fact work. And then we're going to zoom over here, because I want to show you the damage that we do. Now the flat guns don't do much, obviously. I mean, obviously you wouldn't be expecting our flat guns to completely devastate enemy capital ships, but watch this volley. This crossbones just lost all of its turrets. I suspect this one is probably disabled, but it lost all of its front turrets anyway, in one volley. And I might add that this fleet is worth probably 900,000 materials, and we're fighting with 450,000, so we could potentially have another one of those. Here's another one of our volleys coming in. And there goes another crossbones. Completely defenseless, no hope of survival. Now this pilferer is going to be targeted last, which is unfortunate because these advanced cannons of it are the only things we can actually get through our defences. Because like I said, we don't have our shield set up yet. But this final volley should disable this last crossbones and that should be it. Oh, we only got them on the back there. As you can see, all of their back turrets destroyed in one hit though. That was from the EMP burst. Just gotta wait for the uh, next volley to come in. Here it comes. Not a uh, not a direct hit on the turret, but we did manage to knock it out. Now they're down to one. Now that is completely incapable of getting through our defenses. We seem to be pounding this one for some reason. I guess we've decided that this one needs to die. I would say that our railgun shells are a little bit inaccurate, so just bear that in mind. Now that one's done. Looks like their back turret is actually functioning. I don't think it's going to get through our defences though, yeah, there's one of them destroyed. Looks like this volley is going for this ship over here, with this one functioning front gun. And the ship's destroyed, so we've got one more crossbones left in the pilferer. Lots of flak, not a lot of damage, but lots of flak, lots of uh, keeping the pressure on. Mm, not a great hit from us. See that torpedo landing did not that much. Oh, you see the uh, heat shell there? They always have the yellow uh, yellow fragments. Alright, that one's done. So now we've just got a pill for a left. Will we make it in time before we land a single cram can of volley and disable it in one shot? Yes, we did. Now it's broadsiding us, so I expect us to have some damage done to us. There you go, we hit one time with our cram cannons. And is it done? No, still fighting. One more hit will do it, I think. I actually have to hit it though. That's the current problem. As I can, as you can see, we uh, we do need to increase the accuracy modifier on our rail guns there. Oh, it's so close to being done. Uh, 
Alright, let's see what it did to us. As you can see, we've been, uh... We've been slightly mauled. Um, we've only lost about 40,000 worth of materials. Uh, as you can see, most of the damage was done to this armor belt. Uh, they did get through the prow, and around the side. And you know what that was? That was the pilferer. That was the thing that we don't have any defenses against. Because none of the cram cannons would be hitting on this side. But overall, we didn't lose a single turret. Uh, all of our guns, aside from this little flank gun there, are still functioning. And the ship is still floating just fine. So I'm going to consider that a complete win. Let me just heal us up here, and we'll have a uh, we'll have one more battle, and then uh, and then we'll call it an, an, a day. So the final thing I want to try it against, because it's not really fair, because I've already tried that battle a few times, so I know that we were going to win that. There's no doubt in my mind. Final thing that we're going to do uh, before I end this and finally actually start the uh, campaign. I'm going to install these. Pretty simple to do. Uh, I just want to turn our shields on when an enemy is in range. So if there is an enemy within 3,000 meters, we're going to increase that to as close as we can get for an infinity. I say shield projectors, I want you to set drive. I'm going to set it to 6. I'm going to go to this one and I'm going to say enemy and then I'm going to invert it. So if there is no enemy within 4,993 meters, then I want you to turn our shield projectors off. Right, so now we have our shields functioning, our shield projectors are working, we have our laser systems, we should be able to take on pretty much anything. I'm gonna say we're gonna take on three crossbones, and we're gonna take on three pilferers. I don't think we're gonna win this. Just to be clear, uh, this is quite overwhelming odds for a single ship to take on. Uh, but we will just save the Mars class, just so we don't lose it in the case of a complete destruction. As you can see, we got some pretty good shield coverage there, uh, only the barrel sticking out. Now, you've already seen what we can do to them, so let's just have a look at what we're doing. None of those were going to land anyway, so they don't really count. Uh, we seem to be reversing for some reason. <laughs> Only known to the AI and from the depths. None of those are going to hit, obviously. The biggest weakness that we have with our laser defense system is that two of our lasers are only on the bow and only one of them is actually defending the side, so we're effectively only using a quarter of our potential defenses. Which is perhaps something we could retrofit in the future, um, but I've been working on this for hours now and I think I'm quite content with what we have at the moment. You know, it's reasonably resistant to uh, cram cannons and that's what I want. Now, as you see, we are taking fire from the pilferers. Those are going to be the things which we're most scared of. Now, we've only got two mainframes, and the, AI, the a AA mainframe only controls the flag, and it's set up exactly the same as the main mainframe at the moment, so we're not going to be doing uh, huge amounts of uh, switching targets. We're all going to be focusing on the same target. Let's just have a look. See, we lost uh, two of the shields on the front there. But we're holding up pretty well at the moment. Nothing's gone through our, uh, our belt armor. So it looks like this is the target we're focusing on. These are our machine guns, not going to do anything, but they are going to hose them down. One more volley with our cram cannons. That should uh, end this fight for this one, anyway. Yes, indeed. Their uh, turrets are disabled. Looks like that crossbones is out, that crossbones is out, that crossbones is in trouble. Now, the problem now is is that we're going to keep wasting our time shooting at this one when we should be shooting at the pilferers. 
Because as you can see, this still has way more blocks than the Pilferers do, so this is still seen as the bigger threat, but it's completely disabled at this point. Right, so we've knocked out one crossbow. Still got th two crossbones left and three Pilferers. And the Pilferers are going to be hammering on the damage now, because I can already see that we're losing some of our shields. In fact, it looks like we've only got one shield left functioning on this side. Never mind, we have no shields left functioning. But we're still firing at the crossbones. But, I mean, you can tell we're still putting up quite the fight. It's starting to get through our belt armor now. It's starting to hit our, our vulnerable internals. So we're going to start to lose turrets now. We're going to start to take a lot of damage. As you can see, this front turret here is uh, functioning on only one turret at full gauge, the other two are about on half. Now we've still got one crossbones to shoot through, right? Like I said at the beginning, I don't expect us to win this one. Uh, even our laser dis system has been completely disabled now, so we're relying on these little machine guns at the top here to deal with the cram cannon shells coming in. Ah. Ammunition locker. Yeah, that's it then. So, uh, what went wrong there? Looks to me like uh, they managed to tunnel through the uh, side armor, detonate the uh, advanced cannon, and then they either tunneled through to get to the uh, ammunition locker, or the detonation of the uh, advanced cannon caused the ammunition to explode. But uh, really, when you just look at the amount of damage that we were sustaining there from the pilferers, there was no way we were going to win that. pretty overwhelming odds, but I'm still pretty pleased with how well we did. We knocked out all three crossbones. So that in its own is enough uh, materials to pay for this, and we were still trading blows with the pilfer right up until the very end there. So yeah, so may I present to you when I fix it up? It's going to take a little while. We did take a real hammering. As you can see, our uh, our engines are completely disabled, uh, PIDs are not functioning anymore, but we're still not sinking. We're still technically able to fight. Or at least we would be if we had any uh, ammunition left. I might have to install some backup ammunition lockers, maybe in the front, maybe in the back. Just so that if we do get ammo racks like that, we might be able to continue the fight. But I mean, at that point, they tunneled through so much armor that like uh, there's no way we were going to survive that our front turrets were pretty much done our back turrets were in trouble it's uh concerning me Receiving. that it's not actually oh we ran out of materials as well like why is this not working our materials. Uh, I will probably install, just while we're here, while I know, put in uh, another material locker somewhere. Make room, find room. Another material locker and a uh, friendly vehicle repair bay. Put in these cargo containers because they got quite a lot of hell. Never mind. Put one of these in there. And then we'll just we'll just do a few of these. Uh, it's not that many, uh, but it should be enough. We're at 450,000 materials, so this thing can effectively afford to replace itself. Alright then, well, without further ado, allow me to present to you the Mars-class battleship.